We're here at Petrified Forest National Park to recover one or maybe two uh, cores from the Triassic Age sediments in this part of the world. The Triassic period is a critical time for the evolution of the Earth system and for life itself. When we look at the Triassic, it's bracketed by two major extinction events, plus it includes a minor extinction event in the middle. So we get to look at how populations of animals and plants rebound and how they recover from mass extinctions. In the Triassic, the supercontinent of Pangaea straddled the equator and where we are right now was located in the tropics. When we look at this landscape and we look at these rocks that appear to be completely exposed, you can walk up to any part of it. Right where you're standing on, you're standing on a bunch of bone fragments. Huh and copper lights that are coming out of this layer. And right here, that's a phytosaur tooth. In order to compile a vertical succession of events that spanned millions of years, you have to go to very different geographical areas and try to piece those pieces together. You want to get the, all the layers in one place, and that's what a core hole gives us. It gives us a column of rock, thousands of feet thick, that have all of the layers that we're interested in in an undoubtable vertical succession. That's the primary information that you get out of a core hole that you can't get out of these rocks even though they're so beautifully exposed. Some of the most interesting things that we'd like to know that would come out of this project uh, are what is the relationship between the big faunal and floral changes that we see recorded in these rocks and other events that are happening at the same time, big catastrophic events. Like 65 million years ago, a giant asteroid hit the Earth, and that resulted in the extinction of a large proportion of life in general. What we'd really like to know is how somewhat smaller uh, asteroid impacts affect life, if at all. Right now, we have absolutely no calibration of that. But we do have a really large impact that occurred in the late Triassic, for sure, the giant Manicowagan impact. It's about half the size of the impact at the end of the Cretaceous 65 million years ago. And it looks like it's coincident with the largest change in fauna and flora that we see in the strata of the park and in fact in the late Triassic in general. By getting this core, we can tie that down and test whether that coincidence is actually a causally related phenomenon. We have models of how the Earth system works, but to test those, we have to have an unimpeachable record of events. How's it look? Pretty good. We know carbon dioxide is rising. We know it's rising because of human interactions. We also think that that should have a strong influence on climate change. So we're back here in the late Triassic. We know from the rock record itself that carbon dioxide was quite high at the time. We need to know how that higher carbon dioxide affected the climate. By studying these cores, we'll be able to see if the Earth system model predictions actually apply to this ancient record. So the understanding of the ancient environment gives us strong clues to the behavior of future climate. And in fact, it's the only way to test these climate models other than letting the experiment we are in right now run its course. And I think we'd like to know that in a little bit more certainty than we do now. Thank you.